just finishing up on this flagstone patio and washing it off right now. Uh, this is my third video. I show you the way I do it. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I put the joints in. I use a wet mix. I do everything at the same time. Other guys will use a dry mix or a dry pack, they call it. Don't matter how you do it, as long as it works. Different parts of the country, you do it a different way. But uh, I'm just going to show you the way I do it. I never had a call back, so here we go. Well, today, today we're going to put stone on this pad. It's not my job, but uh, we're going to put stone on the pad. So we're going to do a can uh, project like this. We've got to look at their old patio. What they did, they just took these sod pieces and they put them on the outside. I'm not a fan of that, but uh, we've got to copy it. We can't do it the other way where I used the edger. Same thing. I'm going to get a cornerstone here. Put the sod edges and hang them over about three quarters of an inch. Now when I get new stone, I search all the stone out and I get all my edges first. Anything that's going to be seen first. I'm laying all my stones out dry. I want to get all my good stones on the perimeter. So here's what I did. I laid these all out dry. All around the perimeter. All the stones out completely around. I used my best stones for around the sides so I could get my heights. So next thing I'm going to do is mix the cement and get my heights. So here's where I'm at. I got my corner in. I put the line up. See the line? I'm going to follow that line and got that corner in. Come over here against the door. I got a good pitch. And I follow my line around. And I'm going to put my spotters in. Well, here's my mix. One bucket of Portland. The two buckets of masonry sand. See that? The Portland cement. That's what I'm using. What I'm doing is I'm laying a spotter between there and there. So my heights are right. in the day I put all my my line in there put my spotters in came over here against the door I got some stones in there got all my spotters in. I got to lay it all out now I just got to start cutting and filling in the middle so I'm back here on the third day I laid over there I'll show you that and now all I'm doing is cutting them out dry laying everything dry one reason is when the water, I want the water to go through in case it rains and snows, which it's going to do tomorrow night. So let me show you what's going on with the stone. Now here's what I did. I laid this all out yesterday. And I went all along the perimeter. That way I could walk around it when I'm cleaning if I want. So let's go look at the stone. This is what's going on. This is the stone they took off the patio. And they want to mix it in. It's still good. Just got to clean it up a little. It's pretty smooth. It's an older stone, but when you buy new stone, it comes like this. You know what I mean? It's got ledges on it. It's got bumps on it. Uh, this one's not too bad. It's got holes in them. That's what you get. They don't really give you Class A stone anymore, so you gotta kind of make your stone like this. See? Then you pick your best pieces out. Like this is a pretty good one right here. It's pretty thick. You look down at it, it's pretty straight. That's a little niche there. That's good. So, got this indentation. I don't want it there. Like that. I'm going to go take the stone and see where it fits. Look on the back of the stone, it's dirty. Get a wire brush and get it off. Sometimes you bring the hose out here, the only thing you're doing is making mud. 
So right before I lay it, I'll sponge it off. This wire brush is going to get it where I want it to be, you see? Now this looks like a, a good spot for it, but it don't fit exactly the way I want. So I'm going to do this. Cut that. Put a little, maybe I'll put a bigger bowl in here. So it goes up there a little bit. And I'll cut that so that I, got, I could fit that in here. the saw. Saw makes a sure thing. Now I want to do that for the next one. Save a little bit of saw blade. Now when you, you gotta say cut a stone, what you do is use this part of the hammer, not this part. It's only for fine stuff. Then you turn it up like that and you crush it. That's how you that's how you use a stone hammer. I'm looking at this one. This one looks pretty good. I can live with that. I'm just going to cut it here. stone is pretty thick so it's going to be easier just to do it with the hammer. I can tell you something though, the saw saves a lot of uh, a lot of stone. Do it that way too. See that? So do you always have to use a saw? No you don't. So I'm all done cutting. I'm only about four feet away from my spotter so I don't lose my spacing. So I'm all ready to go. Next warm day we get with no rain, we're going to lay it down. Uh, I'm back the next day. Uh, actually it snowed. So we look at the bottom. Look at the bottom of the stone. That's pretty good. That stone. See that? And then we just throw the cement in. wet. This concrete is wet from yesterday. already on the bottom that's what we want. The only thing really holding this on the ground when you're doing stonework is God and gravity. That's it. We do this. That shakes it in there. I'm gonna go to our spotter and look I'm a little low and then I check it again. Rubber hammer, you gotta get a rubber hammer. You can just feel it. 
just know that you're right. You can feel it as you're, you're going along. And you check it. You don't want that spotter. Here's my other spotter down here. Over here, it's got to come down a little bit to hit that spotter. You don't want the water hitting here, laying like a dam, even though stonework is a... Uh, that's why you got to put, put a big pitch on it. So that's our first stone. And then, at the same time, I always do my joints. Why do I do that? I think it's a lot better job. Like that. And I'll be going on to my next stone over here. Same thing, check my bottom. Looking good. Getting it down. You know what I mean? Here's what's going on. This is my my board, so gotta make sure it's on my spotter. I don't know if you could see it under there. But see, we want to get it down so that water doesn't dam up behind there and hold it backwards. You see what I mean? I want to get it over there to my thing, so all my things are even. Set that rat here. Keep it in there. student here, Ronnie. He owes me money. <laughs> What's that? Beautiful. Yeah? That's gorgeous. Sure. Put the joints in at the same time. Some guys don't do that. As a matter of fact, there's nothing wrong with that. But I know from experience that if I do it, if I don't put the joints in at the same day, I'm gonna have two things happen. These stones might be unlevel, then how am I gonna fix it? I'm using a sponge here. See the sponge? I ripped it out of my cousin's car seat when he wasn't around. <laughs> and I just go over go over that now I know that joints level it's actually married to the to the bottom of the of the cement that's underneath the stone and it's good so now if you go down to the Carolinas or maybe Philadelphia Georgia you don't have to do it that way you can do a dry pack because you're not you're not into the freezing weather like you are up here that's why I'm doing it this way. So we're doing good. I'm putting all my joints in at the same time. And uh, working out good. talk about that job a little bit. In all my videos I put how I put a stone patio in, how I put a sidewalk in. And, and there's a reason for that. And the reason is because when you work with other Masons, and I work with them from all over the world and all over this country, they all do things a little different. If you notice, when I put my joints in on that stonework, 
everything goes in at one shot. Put the cement in, and I put in uh, the joints at the same time. Now, if you deal with people from the Mediterranean countries, or Florida, or uh, down in the Carolinas, or even Philadelphia, they don't do it that way. They put it in, and maybe the next day they'll joint it up. That's not wrong. But the problem is, around here, the weather is horrible. The first thing you got to know is that concrete absorbs water. So what happens is, at, at during the day it might rain, and it gets into the concrete, it gets into them joints, and it gets in underneath the stone, and it freezes at night, and it'll pop it up. I'm just going to show you my weather pattern in my area, just to give you an idea. Now here's a point I want to make. This is uh, the weather in December. 43 during the day, 30 at night. 40 during the day, 27 at night. 42 during the day, 39. And it goes on and on. It freezes at night. Here's another one. And it thaws out during the day. Water gets under that stone. It's going to pop it up. Now you've seen that and you see what I'm talking about. Now when you go to Philadelphia, it's 7 to 10 degrees difference. So here it's freezing at night. Down there it's not. It's a big difference. What works in Pennsylvania where I live doesn't really work in Florida and what works in Florida doesn't work in Alaska what works in Alaska doesn't work in California they all got different reasons for doing things a different way the reason I do it that way I put the cement in I get the stone I keep pounding it with the hammer I look to see if there's any pockets because I know that water will get in there and I know it'll freeze and pop the stone up so me by nature I don't like doing work like that anywhere close to the winter time. After November 1st, I'm very skeptical about starting a stone job, but that contractor, he already put the base in. He calls me up December 1st and said, I need, to, need you to put the stone patio in. So I was against it, but I did it. I usually don't even like to start a stone job until after March 1st, and then I know the weather's on my side. Uh, people ask me, how long do you let cement sit before it freezes. If I do a job like that and it didn't freeze in three days, I'm pretty confident. Uh, all the empty spots underneath, like I said, I, I hammered them down. I have no empty spots. My joints are all in the same time. I'm good. But if you go down to Florida, they don't use flagstone. They use some coral rock. And they mix it weaker because it expands more and contracts. Nothing freezes. It. It's a whole different world world down there so when you got to do something like I just did there and you want to know what works you have to ask the local guys local guys are no are the ones that knows what works in their area you have to have a good pitch I put a good pitch three percent is three inches down to a hundred I think on that one we did two because you don't want the water laying on the stone you want that water getting off as fast as possible well, I think I said everything I wanted to say. Uh, I always go with that thing is, there's no right and wrong way to do it, as long as it works. That's, that's my opinion. So I appreciate you watching the videos. I hope you get something out of it. Uh, there's other people who do it different way, and they're right for what they do in their area. So I just want to point that out. So I'm Mike Haddock. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next video.